If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to get the latest updates. And uh, did you guys uh, go through the things that we have uh, discussed yesterday? Uh, yes. 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 So any doubt in that, like uh, what we have discussed yesterday? No. So what is hub? What is uh, uh, core deployment? Did you guys understood all the things or any doubt in this? Yeah, no doubt. Okay, so far, no doubt, right? Okay, so uh, let me start. Uh, let me share my screen. Once you can see my screen, just let me know. Is it visible? Not at Krishna. No. Okay, fine. So welcome to the uh, SAP MDG 9.2 training. Uh, today is central governance topic. And uh, this is the disclaimer that uh, yesterday also we have seen and uh, the agenda what would be there, like process flow, central management of material master data and uh, integration SAP cloud uh, for customer with MDG. MD, uh, uh, MD, uh, MGGC. So, uh, like yesterday, we discussed about the hub and core deployment, right? So, what is hub deployment and what is core deployment? Can anyone tell me? In yeah. the hub so, deployment, SAP of MDG will be uh, in, I mean, Mommy, uh, in a different system. Emma. Where we Mommy, have only the master data sorry, I'm sorry, where oh. the master data system is maintained in MDG and the okay. same is, uh, I mean, uh, synchronized with the transactional Mama. system of other uh, system. Okay. So we'll have a two different system, like one as a separate Mommy. MDG box and as an, one more as a transactional system. Mommy. That is a hub one. Mommy. Fine. Very good. And core deployment, uh, MDG and ECC will be in the same box, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I think you can see my screen, right? So, basically, what happens in uh, MDG? Let me uh, tell you. Think that what we have covered. So, yesterday we just understood what is MDG, what is the need of MDG in the system means uh, SAP, and uh, how MDG basically works. Then we have seen uh, what is our hub deployment, what is our core deployment, okay? And uh, like, uh, what is the version now of MDG? Okay, all these things we just uh, uh, understood yesterday. And what are the areas that are there in MDG? So let me just, before going to that, let me tell you what are the areas that you, and how these are closely integrated, let me tell you, okay? So you will understand. Just, just one second, Krishna. Okay. Sorry to interrupt here. Just yeah. along with that, I saw some points like uh, this uh, floor plan manager and other technical things, which I literally don't know about it. Uh. Probably, you, I hope you would be covering in the going forward class. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, see. Like, because you okay, you say that FPM, ABAP, and enhancements, batteries, and O data services. Yes. I don't know. Yes, I have. Uh, I told you right. So everything I will explain uh, one by one in the coming uh, sessions and all. Okay, so, and just to add on here, so we would be getting the MDG Fury app related uh, sessions as well, right? MDG Fury, see, Fury basically uh, there will be Fury consultant who will be working on the UI. Okay, you will be as a MDG consultant, you will be working in the backend. So backend like how the governance process will be governed that i will tell you with the apis and all okay so uh okay. like Let's discuss, yeah. yeah so basically what happens in mdg like the fpm or what is there so it is inbuilt so whatever you will do in the screen it will be governed automatically you no need to do anything okay so uh, this architecture is built by sap but when it comes to Fury or UI5 screen or any other screen. It, it is not just Fury screen. Client can have some other screen. Okay. React or Angular, they can have that screen also. But with SAP, through OData, data will be passed and consumed. 
okay and once data is passing and consuming then then governance process will also work right how will it work this will be uh, means uh, handled through the apis so i will tell you this o data and all these things you are talking about only for the mdg query no, 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 no. See, no 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 mdg see mdg is different okay mm -hmm. o data is different okay, okay. now because when... i did not get the grip of what we started now so that's the reason i'm asking no see yeah. ye yesterday what we covered we covered introduction right what is mdg why we use mdg what is the need of mdg okay then we uh, discuss like what are the technologies where mdg is used one is the fpm right where it is inbuilt means governance process is inbuilt through that you can do it second is the fury and o data what the, uh, means this is very uh, less used in the industry now fury and o data maybe in coming days maybe or four five years people will uh, work on it but currently this is the hot topic above fpm basically mdg above fpm uh, so far i means in my career i have i have worked only in one project and in that project also i have seen that the front end is used by uh, means uh, handled by the fury or the ui fact consultant and back end basically we are doing and we are just uh, writing the apis and logic in the method and we are uh, means uh, providing a governance process okay because in a industry means so many people will be working right ui developer also working back end web developer also working then your mdg consultant is also working so like this it will be there then we have discussed like what are the deployment option we have okay so say for example you are a consultant mdg consultant now if you go to uh, means if some company hired you so they will be asking you so this is the scenario of my company these are the things uh, means the system i have this is the robust system i have and i want to use mdg now you uh, means suggest us like what would be better for our company whether the core deployment or hub deployment so the if the system is very diverse okay so many systems they are using okay so like crm srm okay some operational ecc other systems so that time it is better to have hub and uh, the system is not that diverse that time uh, we can say okay you can use the core deployment but it is again uh, up to the uh, discussion level how complex the uh, means uh, systems are and architecture of their system so based on that you can have a call this much is clear hello yes krishna yes thank you yeah now see i have told you yesterday that today i will be discussing about change request access class staging area active area right so before going to the system and all it is very uh, important to understand these concepts what basically happens so how mdg works let me tell you i hope everyone is uh, aware of the m tables and all in sap are you guys uh, means aware of the tables or uh, anyone does not know what is tables what is structure yeah yeah we know yeah, everyone no, knows yeah. i don't know you don't know right okay no problem very good if you don't know anything just tell me that i don't know so that would be very helpful for me also to explain so let me just tell you uh, give you a little bit of uh, idea what is table how data is uh, stored okay uh, let me ask. so ac11 we have we can see the tables so general table i am showing you here say for example mara so what is mara mara is material related table right or anything else i'm saying yeah generally what happens in mdg whatever you do okay the data will be stored in table now you will say what is table right so every software has its database its application layer and its presentation layer 
Now, what is presentation layer? This is our presentation layer through which we can see all the things. Say, for example, table, programs, or whatever. So this is presentation. Application layer means where some calculations are going, some reports are running, right? And database layer where the data will be stored. And how the data is stored in the database? Through these tables, okay? These are the tables, and these are the fields of the tables, and here the data will be stored, okay? Similarly, in SAP, uh, MDG, what happens? They have the staging area and active area. Now what you will say, what is staging area and what is active area? These are also tables. These are what? Tables. And what is table? Table is basically uh, the entity where the data will be stored in the database, through which, right? And now if I want to retrieve the data in the application server, so I don't know, right, where the data is stored. But if some table name is there, then I know, right, in the database, this is the area where the uh, data is stored. This is the table where the data is stored. And this data I can get from this table, right? So this is table. Now, basically, what is happening? So MDG has changed request. Anyone uh, knows what is change request? Anybody? Change request That's is a basically primary thing which we need to start for any process to start an MDG. Yes, yes. So very good. So what we uh, discussed yesterday, if you guys remember, we were telling about the uh, change, create, change, delete, but display is not what. A change process, but create is a change process, change is a change process, and delete is a change process. How? Because in create, what is happening? One data is inserting in the database table. Means what? Initially, the database table, no data was there. Okay, or maybe some data was there, and again, some other data has been inserted. So there is a change, right? Because, say, for example, uh, earlier there were eight records in the uh, table. Now we have uh, inserted ninth record. So there is a change. So this change uh, has happened. So that is why we say it is considered into the change process and change request will be allotted to it. Then change, change uh, anyway, any record is there. So it would be uh, means a change over there. And a delete is also a change because a previous, previously eight record is there. I have deleted one. So now seven record is there. So there is a change in the data, uh, means database table. Now, as uh, some people does not know what is uh, table. So let me tell you, in table, what happens? In table, basically, we have fields. Field one. OK. Field one. Field two. Field three. Field four. Field five. So there are so many fields, OK? So if you see here, Mara table. So there, uh, you can see there are 357 fields. Can you see this? There are 357 fields. And if you execute the Mara table, OK, so these are the fields, basically. OK, and number of entries, you can see. So how many, uh, what are the number of entries we have in Mara table? So this is the number of entries, 2751. Okay, 2751 uh, records are there. And if we execute it, see, this is how the record will be. So I was telling about record, right? This is one record, means this is one entry. This is another record. And this is the value of the field, like Matner, this is the date, this is the created time, this is the name, okay? So all these are there. So like this, the data will be maintained in the table. I hope this much is clear to you guys. Yes. Now, what is change request? So whatever you do, whatever, whatever change you do in the MDG, it, that you will do against a change request. Okay, any change you do in MDG, it will be against a change request. Say, for example, for change, uh, create, 
we will have a change request C1. Okay, for change, we have a change request C2. For delete, we have a change request C3. Okay. So these change requests will solely uh, associated with create this change request will solely associated with change and this change request will be solely associated with delete. So this change request C1 we are only using for delete, right? So whatever you uh, do the change, this would be uh, controlled by this change request. Any, uh, anywhere you want to see any uh, data uh, means what has happened, what is the status, whether uh, it has been activated or not. So this can be uh, looked into through the uh, this one, change request, okay. Now, the change request also has its own table. Let me show you. So this is very important, these tables. Okay. This is the change request table. So can you see, this is the change request number. This is the type of the change request. This is the status of the change request. This is the description. Why am I uh, showing you this table? Because I will be telling, uh, talking you about the status of the change request and what basically happens with the means when the change request is activated and uh, what that we will see, okay? So now, see. Uh, what type of record the change request will be having. Can you see? So this Can is you... a table for change request? Yes, this is the table for change request. Change request basically has, uh, means generally two uh, uh, tables. If you uh, know about change request, this is okay. Okay, so another table is C11. And day-to-day -day activity in your uh, means project, this tables will be very handy, okay? So another one is USMD 12, 13, okay? So this is the table where change request is associated or linked with the uh, data, okay? So Mara table, so if any record is created in Mara, so this is linked with this change request. So what record is uh, created uh, in Mara or change in Mara, how will it link? It would be linked here. Okay, in this table, it would be linked. Okay, which entity? So everything we will see in detail, so you will understand. Now this is the table. So what is this? This is change request type. And what is this? This is change request number. Okay. Now what is change request type? And what is change request number? Little bit idea, let me give you now. Uh, these things I will um, means brief you thoroughly and we will go to the process modeling chapter, okay? So now, change request, okay? So first thing, in system as a consultant, what you will be creating? You will create a change request type. Change request type. Now you will ask me that you told uh, that in system we create change request. Now you are saying no, in uh, system you have to create change request type. So what is change request type? Basically, when you create a material, you don't create just one material, right? You create multiple materials, n number of materials you can create, right? But this n number of material, whether it is a creation of the material, change of the material, or deletion of the material, right? It is what uh, means uh, controlled by change request, right? So basically what we create, we create a type and we say this type of change request is for the three. So change request type C1, basically what we create in the system, we create change request type. So this type, basically what this type uh, told us, so this type uh, means type C1 will be telling us that this is associated with creation. So if you see in the table, so this is the table, right? So this basically um, MLT01, see MLT1. Uh, 
So change request type is here M A T. So Z limit is there. Someone is created Z limit is zero one. Let us see what uh, it is there. So there, see how many types are there? Only one type. MAT01. So this is for say for example creation. And what are the change request number here? Two different number, right? 574 and 576. Yes or no? So right. what does it mean? For this creation of change request uh, type, we have two change request number for same change request type. So this is the creation. And in creation, how many change requests means how many record has been created in the Mara table? Two record has been created in the Mara table. From this table information, we have come to know, right? Or a, anything uh, uh, means uh, any confusion you have. Any confusion no. or you have understood so far? No, no. Yeah, of course. This is clear, right? So basically, in uh, MDG, what basically we do, we create change request type. Okay, based on this change request type, change request numbers are generated, means how many records will be created, this many numbers will be generated, right? So this is one thing we have understood. Now comes staging and active area so, and access class. Staging area means what? Whenever you say, for example, you are the requester, okay? So say, for example, Anupama is the requester, Richard is uh, means the approver one. Okay, so like this the uh, process will be. So when Anupama is requesting something, okay, so what she will be requesting, she she will say that I want to create the material. So once she wants to create the materials from the system, she will uh, select the change request type. So say for example, she will select C one. So C one means what? Creation of change means uh, uh, means material, right? Then she will fill the necessary information in the screen, and then she will submit it. So once she will submit it, what will happen? One change request number will generate it against this change request type. So say for example, zero zero one has been generated. Now this change request number will be uh, sent to whom the approver. Right. Say, for example, Richard is the approval. Okay, so it would be sent to him. So what Richard will do, he will uh, check everything is okay or not. If he feels that it is not okay, what he will do, he will send it back to means reject it and it will come to the requester. Okay, and if he uh, thinks that, okay, if I reject it, so this process should be cancelled. Okay, this process should not go uh, further. So then the process will be terminated. So these are different scenarios that we can uh, build in the system. Okay, so now the scenario is that uh, based on this change request type, one uh, change request uh, uh, number is created and this change request number is sent to the approval. Now the approval, once it comes to the approval, now what happens, the change request is not yet activated. Getting my point or any doubt in this? When the change request will activate it, when the final approval will happen, right? So say for example, yeah. approval, this is the approval too. So our process is when the final approval approves it, the change request, then it will, the change request will be activated. Right. Okay. And I was showing you the table, right? So when the table, this will be activated. See, now the status you can see 02. So 02 is not the status for active. Okay, active status is 05. So means this change request is not yet change, uh, means what? Activated, right? So this is the change request number. This change request number is still in the process. So when the change request is in process, say for example, 02, 03, 
okay means what this is not yet active right means the final approval is not uh, means uh, still uh, the final approval did not approve it that time the data will be present in the staging table getting my point or any doubt in this yep got it means till the uh, means uh, change request is activated means the final approval is done till then the data whatever data will be providing that data will present in the staging table okay understood this concept when it out so you have understood right this concept what happens and once the change request is activated this data from the uh, staging table will move to what Active, active table, active area, or active table. Okay, active area or active table, you can say. Now, I told yesterday that I will tell you some more detail about the core deployment and hub deployment, right? So, with respect to the staging table and active uh, uh, table or active area, what happens in the core deployment and hub deployment? Let us see here. So these things are very important. And in the interview also, they will be asking you. First, they will asking you the deployment options, like what are the deployment options you have? And a little bit of explanation they will be asking. They will be asking when you will uh, use this uh, code deployment and when you will uh, use this um, hub deployment. Then they will be asking what will happen to the staging area and what will happen to the active area when uh, you are using the hub and code deployment. Okay. And what is reuse mode and what is flex mode? These two things also they will be asking. Okay. So uh, we will understand it very uh, clearly so that if you give interview also, so th that time these things are very clear to you. Staging. So this we have, uh, uh, these things we are clear that if we use change request, when the change request is not active, it is not I be active. It is change record is I be active. Right. Means what? It is still in the approval process. Means approval process where in workflow, right? Yep. Active area means that it is uh, means not in the final approval has been done. Okay. Now, some concept is for reuse. Some concept is called flex. Then we said uh, we have uh, what we said core deployment and hub deployment, right? Okay. So now see what happens. Now we have understood that uh, once the uh, uh, CR is activated, it will go to the active area, right? Means final approval is done. So now two things uh, are there. One is reuse, one is flex. So when SAP has come up with this MDG solution, they provide two modes. One is reuse mode and one is flex mode. Now what is reuse mode and uh, what is flex mode? So for MM, for BP, okay. SAP is told it will be reuse. It would be uh, work in reuse mode. Now, what is reuse mode? In reuse mode, basically what is happening? So let us take the example of hub first. Okay, hub. So what will happen? 
So half we know, one will be the MDG, one will be the operational PCC, right? So uh, that we know for uh, for half. So basically, what happens? MN and BP module. Okay. So whenever the change request is um, activated, so from the staging area or staging table, data will automatically transport it to active area. Okay, automatically transported to what? Active area through access class. Understood or any uh, doubt in this? This is for which mode? Reuse mode. Huh? Yes, this is for reuse mode. Getting my point? For the reuse mode, when the data gets activated, it moves from staging to active using access class. Yes. So access class is nothing but the... Is it like specific to hub deployment or no, code no, deployment? No, no. no. I, I, will, I will explain you uh, code deployment also. You will understand it very clearly what is happening. Okay. Uh, but try to understand this concept first. And uh, maybe you can ask your uh, question after this. So whatever gap is there, then I will just uh, try to uh, answer you. So then it would be clear to you. Okay. So basically what am I saying? In GU's mode, SAP said for MM and BP, okay. Uh, basically we use GU's mode. Why? Because these data are not that sensitive like FI data. FI data is the most sensitive data in the system because this is related to the financial transaction and all, right? So that is why they said it would be the flex mode. So I will tell you what is the difference of flex and reuse uh, in uh, like, uh, uh, give me some time, I will be telling you. So this is the hub. In hub, basically what is happening? MDG, right? In MDG only, what I told yesterday, before uh, means in the hub deployment, before doing uh, any governance process, first of all, from the operational ECC, whatever data is there, we will be transporting into the MDG. Like whatever MM related data is there, I will transport here. What is BP related data is there, I will transport here. What is the FI related data is here, first of all, I will transport it here. I will do all the governance process and then I will transport it, replicate it in the operational ECC, right? That only we told in the uh, hub deployment. So similarly, what is happening here? So this staging and active area, where it is uh, located now, it is located in the MDG only. Okay. So in the MDG system, both these areas is there, staging and active. Okay. So now, when the CR is not active, means what? the requester is requested for the creation of the CR. So that time what is happening? The data is there in the staging table, okay, or the staging area. And once, uh, and where this process is happening, this process is happening in the MDG box, okay? Both these things, staging and active. So once the final approval is done, so that time, what will happen in this MDG box only, this, data what is there in the staging, it will come to the active area through this access class. So access class is the connector between these two. Getting my point? Find out it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So through this, it will come to the active area. So once it comes to the active area, automatically through the DRF, data replication framework, the data, what is there in active area, it will be transported to the ECC. Okay, and now what is this active area? You will a uh, little bit uh, uh, confusion and curiosity we will have. What is this active area? Active area, nothing but your Mara table, your Marcy table. So whatever standard table you have okay, in SAP, or maybe whatever custom table also you will be using, okay, in this process. So this will be your active area. Okay, Mara, Marcy, MARD, material related. So this will be your active area. Okay, so in this tables, the data will be stored. Any doubt in this? So 
so this mara table right the active area will be in mdg only right it will be in mdg only yes active area will be in the mdg only and once it is uh, means uh, but this mdg will be on top of some ecc right no mdg will be on top of ecc in code deployment okay no. here so also, you are saying this mdg is a stand alone system or is it like a system yes it could be a stand alone system or it could be on ecc also in hub deployment so yesterday i told you right it so, is like uh, correct me it is yeah. like on top of ecc only but you can make that system as a stand alone mdg or as a yes. co deployment correct uh no no not uh, and not entirely uh, what you say it is correct so see what happens in how it could be stand alone mdg right and stand alone mdg is means all the mdg components are deployed in ecc system only right the, so the yes. base is ecc yes but yes. you are yes. not performing any transactional activity in the ecc system here yes. you are yes. performing only the mdg related activities and yes. then sending the data from mdg to Correct, the correct. ECC or yes. S4. Okay, yes. let's get into S4, right? Why? Yes, ECC and then now? it is ECC. Okay, ECC is the what ECC operational ECC where we will do all the transaction related work, right? And this is the MBG on top of ECC. This is the hub deployment. Code deployment. What is there? It would be MDG and ECC, and this ECC only your operational ECC. that right. i got it so basically in the hub deployment also mdg will be on top of ecc only yes yeah in so S4, that is the reason you have this table and all right mara yes, mars yes, mara yes. it is like right. it won't be there in the mdg system right no it would be there in the mdg uh, basically mdg on top of ecc but the thing the data what is there in operational ecc this data won't be present here right that is why right. we have to transport all the data from here to here so this table will be there mara here this table mara will also be there but the data won't be there so from here to here the data should be transported yeah yeah That's got it yeah and so how people... multiple uh, if you have multiple operational ecc then mm. all the data from the mara table yes 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 from different ecc from different operational ecc it will yes. go to that one ecc system yes correct the yeah. one mdg ecc system yeah 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 and there you have to have some checks like well, when this data will go to uh, which system how it go to which system what type of data it is right so this yeah. type of uh, little bit of uh, means uh, checks you should be there and where replication also some filters you should uh, provide so that the data from this ecc should come to this ecc and the data from other ecc say for example another uh, operation ecc is there so the data from here should come to here so the filtering option here should be provided okay, okay. so mdg on ecc or mdg on s4 hana okay so these are what these are all code deployment okay as for these are all code deployment so in uh, means this hub deployment what is happening from staging area uh, uh, means through access class the data will be there in the active area and then it should be replicated so in reuse mode what will happen it will be automatically replicated so this is very important in reuse mode what will happen it will be automatically replicated to where the operational ecc through the drf framework data replication framework and the data what is there in the staging area it would be cleared okay once the cr is activated the staging area no longer hold any data getting my point and it okay. out so this is very important let me write it down so this things in interview also they will ask what happens so use reuse what happen till the data is not or till the cr uh, cr means change request is not active the data will be there in staging area or 
getting this point or any doubt on this? Yeah. Once this PR is activated, the data will be uh, transported to where? Active area from staging area and the data in staging area will be what deleted deleted very good so there will be, it won't hold any data and what will happen auto metric Transfer to application will happen from uh, uh, means um, MDG to ECC. If you have multiple ECC, how system, how MDG will know which ECC has to go? Uh, because in uh, means DRF, you will be providing some filters. Okay. If there you will be providing some criteria. So whatever data will be coming from the one ECC, maybe you can categorize this data with some checks and all. So this checks that should perform in the filtering technique and it will send it to the particular ECC, okay? And so let me show, so, so that, that part is clear to us, right? So once the CR is activated, the data will be transported to active area from the staging area and the data in the staging area will be deleted. Okay, staging area through access class. This is also very important. Active area. Suddenly, suddenly it was muted, right? Uh, yeah, some network issue, I think. So that is right. Okay. So that much is clear to you, right? So that uh, in uh, like uh, interview also, they will be asking how the data is located, but so you should be very thorough with this concepts. Okay. And automatic replication will happen from the MDG to operational ACC through what? DHROU is through DRF. DRF means data replication framework. Getting the point? Any doubt in this? Hello, any doubt? No. no. Okay, fine. In, uh, this is the reuse, in flex mode, what is happening? Flex basically we use for FI, okay? Because finance data is very sensitive data, right? So once, CR will be activated, so data will be still there in the staging area. Data uh, won't be coming to the active area automatically, and from the active area uh, means it won't be uh, means replicated to the operational ACC. So that would be there in the staging area only, and it won't be deleted from there. Okay, getting the point. In uh, huh? Can you repeat that again? Yes, in flex mode, the date after the activation of the CR, the data will remain in the staging area. Okay. Won't be deleted. Getting the point. Okay. There are some concern or uh, some responsible uh, means uh, persons will be there, uh, uh, or maybe some responsible team will be there who will be replicating it manually. Okay. So in flex mode, this is the process. And uh, what about the because? Activity? Uh -huh. In active area also, once they will uh, means do it, then only it will go to the active area. 
okay we will process it then only it will go to the active area why so i just want to hello hmm dala kodram tumhe kodram kodram yeah uh, so we will remain in the staging area okay so it won't be deleted so what will happen basically here some concerned team or concerned person will be there who will be means doing the activities and the data will be uh, transported to the active area and then it will be transported where where will it be transported to the operational ecc right okay any doubt in this no so this much is uh, uh, confirmed right yeah but uh, why 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 what is because, what is the purpose of doing yeah what is the pop, yeah what is the purpose of this text mode right because in any industry fi data is very sensitive right yes okay. and it is related to the financial uh, things like money uh, means your uh, transaction of currency you know so in the what happens if any mistake will happen so that will cause a very big uh, problem to the company so that is why they are double checking everything so once the cr is activated through all the approval process then also they have put a concerned team or concerned person who will do the final uh, means uh, uh, scrutiny and all and then uh, they will see okay everything is uh, correct or not then then uh, they uh, means process it so But with the mn and bp it is not the case once it is approved through the approval process it will directly uh, go to the active area and the uh, means operation ecc okay i have a question hmm. yeah so after checking for uh, quality like they move it to to the active area then will it also yes. be manually moved to the ecc uh yes it has to be manually moved to ecc or it will still remain in the staging area uh, and the data will be there in staging area okay because in future purpose if they want to tell you something right like what was the change and what had happened so that time they can just go to the staging area and check the active area and they can check okay what is the problem and why some uh, mismatch is there so that is why the data uh, will be there in the staging area it won't be removed from the staging area okay so it will be there for always yes yes and some uh, like i told you right uh, i uh, worked on the fury this one uh, means uh, one project was there there also i have seen that they have created their custom uh, data model and their custom data model they made it as flex uh, uh, data model so the uh, using the flex basically over there because they their data also they think that uh, okay if anything happens in future with the data and all and if you want to backtrack so it is better to uh, make the data modulus flex but it is up to the consultant and how the business is and how they want to uh, means uh, store the data or uh, means how, what is the operation they want uh, on the data so based on that they do so uh, this is not much we will be doing but uh, it is uh, means a call uh, from the company itself or the means organization how they want to uh, use that data if they are using the custom data model okay so accordingly maybe as a mdg consultant who can also suggest that okay this much of data you have so uh, okay this much of process we can do and uh, like this we can store the data so this is this could also be uh, possible so yeah. quick question <clears throat> yeah please go so for the backtracking right to see what happened all those things so we can go into the change yes. request table and then we can see it right yes you can uh, anyway you can go to the change request and from but change request table you won't be getting all the data right because if you see the change request table you won't be getting all the records you will see the status and you will see what you will see the uh, means which uh, record is basically associated with the change right then you will go to the table 
then you will see uh, what is the uh, data available, right? Then right. if you want to thoroughly examine, then you can just take the data from the staging area and see in uh, means what had happened to this data. And then you can go to this, your active area also. And then there also you can check, right? Okay. okay. In the active area. Uh -huh. And okay. you can compare both the staging and the active area data what was there. And then you can compare the conclusion, okay, this was the problem maybe uh, where it was happening. Okay. So basically these are the process what SAP is uh, providing. Okay. Okay. Uh, anybody has any doubt in this? I just want to like uh, solidify, solidify my knowledge very well. So for the reuse model, like after the activation, everything is automated to uh, to the ECC. But for the flex mode, like it has to be manually moved to the active uh, active uh, mode and also to to the ECC. Like everything is manual. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. It will be done. So a certain team will be there. Okay, so that team will be doing it. Okay. And in core deployment also what will happen in core deployment um, it's automatically the data will be um, means come to the active the area and in active area then I think, uh, Asha, I think uh, we have a network because the operational ECC and the MDG both are in the same system, right? So replication the strong momentum. I think Krishna, we are now is it audible? A... Yeah, now it is okay. Now it's okay. I don't know, is it from your okay. side or is it from our okay, side? Fine. I think it's from your side. Um okay. Okay, so this much is clear to you or any doubt in this. See, this is very important uh, mains topic, uh, what I have discussed now. So going forward, if you want to understand MDG properly, so these concepts you should be thorough with. Okay, what is the okay. use of flex, uh, co-deployment, hub deployment. Okay, so is the, process the, same? Is the process the same in all and co-deployment? Co See, process is same. All the process is same. Okay, in the core deployment uh, or the hub deployment or the reuse mode or the flex mode. Okay, everything okay. is same. But the basic thing is what, like, while you are replicating the things, how it is replicated, or the staging area. When the staging area is holding the data, and when the staging area is, means uh, data will be deleted. All the things. Okay. Okay. So this means final some uh, points are there in the reuse and flex mode. How SAP has uh, tried to uh, encounter these problems and all. Okay. Okay. So I hope this much is clear to you. Or any doubt in this? It's clear. It's yeah. clear. Right? So now I told you, right, that uh, data uh, means in the, uh, means hub deployment, what happens from the operational ECC, the data will be transported to the MDG, right? Mm -hmm. Now, how it is transported, it could be transported to BODS. If it is uh, uh, volume of data is uh, more or file import. File import when we use, if you have very uh, means uh, less amount of data, then maybe file upload is one technique is there. Okay, with the help of that also we can do. Then DIF is also there. DIF means data import framework. Through this also we can means uh, uh, upload the data in this uh, means MDG uh, system. Okay, subsystem. Uh, what is getting the point, right? Huh? Which one is commonly used? Oh, it depends. See, if you uh, the volume of data is less or for a single entity, basically you are using, that time we can use file upload. If for multiple entities and also the volume is less, then we can go to DIF. And BODS means uh, when the means uh, 
the volume of data is uh, more, that time we can go for the BODS. So these are the different techniques, different uh, purposes this has been used, okay? So just remember file upload is for the single entity. This is for the multiple entities and all. And uh, and in these two also the volume won't be uh, subsequently high. And in the BODS, what will happen? The volume of data will be less. So BODS oh, sorry, volume... The volume, sorry, sorry, volume of data will be more in the BODS, okay? And the uh, entities? What about the entities? Entities, you are offering yeah, a table. Entities, entities will, anyway, it will be there. So now I will be talking about the entities and attributes only. So you will understand what is entity, what is attribute basically. Okay. And so can how you, it is, what is the abbreviation of BODS? Uh, business object uh, data services. BODS. So this is basically for uh, transporting the data one system to another. Then SLT is also there. There are various techniques of data replication. So there is a uh, one dedicated uh, data replication team will be there, okay? Who will be uh, doing all these things? The replication part and all. Getting the point or any doubt in this? Yeah, got it. Now, uh, these things are clear to us, right? What we have discussed today. Now, mm -hmm. what is there in MDG basically, what we will look in, in MDG. First, I will tell you. Then I will, uh, one by one, I will start. Uh, means in the system also, I will show you how the things are. Then maybe from tomorrow, we can create the uh, data model and all. Okay. So that you will get some idea like how it is created, how it, it has been maintained, okay? All these things. Okay, so in MDG, we have data model first, okay? Based on this data model, everything will revolve, okay? So we say that we have the active areas or active table like Mara, Marcy, Mard, Okay, and again, there are so many tables that they right? So yeah. now, data model is basically data metadata, means data about a data, okay? Means what? Whatever structures we have, so all the data in the Mara table, we, are, we won't be governing, yes or no? Sorry, what is yes the question? Yes. Sir. yes. So this is also very important uh, point. So in the Mara table, we say, for example, 357 fields we have, right? Uh -huh. And how many records we have seen? 2000, say for 470, I think, the record we have seen, okay? So these fields in Mara table, these fields will be having all the data. Say, for example, MATNAR. MATNAR is what? It is containing the material number, then uh -huh. material type, material group, uh, valuation class, right? So there are fields. So these fields will work. These fields will be having the data. But in MDG prospective, no need to govern all the 357 fields, right? Okay. Getting the point. Because in MDG perspective, they will say, okay, these are some uh, out of 357, 200 fields are there which are important and which need to be governed when you are creating the data. Okay, so these 200 fields only justify whether this record is duplicate or not. The rest, if the data matches also, this does not mean that this data is duplicate. Maybe this is a new data, it means new record. Getting the point? Okay. So when you say that I you have a Mercedes car, and if the someone else is say, I am also having the Mercedes car. Okay, so what basically differentiate? So both the colors same, both the everything is same in this car, in the two car. 
So from the uh, means, if I go and if I see Bhogdakar from a certain uh, distance, so what I will say, I, I will be confused, right? Which is the uh, means, uh, which is your car, which is someone else's car, right? Because both are looking same. But what will differ, uh, differ it? The number plate, right? Yeah. So if mm -hmm. I see the number plate and if I know your number plate number, then I will know, okay, this is your car and this is someone else's car. So similarly, in like when creating a material or maybe Mara tables, some fields are there which clearly distinguish, okay, this is what based on that we can say, okay, this is a uh, different material and this is also a different material. Okay, these both the materials are not duplicate of each other, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, with this 200 fields, the governance process will um, means what uh, the purpose of the governance will be solved. So that is why we will consider this 200 fields. So that is why in the data model for this, we will consider only this 200 fields. Similarly for Marcy also, say for example, out of 400 fields, we will uh, consider only 100 fields. So like that, we will create what we will create in the data model with MPP. So what will what the entity will be holding? Entity, say for example, we will say Mara is one entity. So directly we will write Mara. Say for example, Mara one is my entity. What Mara one will be holding? Holding the two hundred attributes means the two hundred fields. Okay. Getting the point or any doubt in this? Yeah, so instead of holding all the fields, it will hold only certain fields. Which are governed, yeah. which will be there in the governance process. Okay. okay. So that is why we say we have the entity over here. So there are Marcy. Okay. So for Marcy also attributes will be there. Say for example, 100 attributes will be there for Marcy. Is this clear? To you guys or any doubt in this yeah clear and what is the data model data model will be the mm so in mm what is there mm so many tables are there right and yeah. in so many tables we have so many fields okay so like this we will say okay mara is one entity so basically we they won't uh, uh, have mara as entity so material is one entity so material has its own fields and some other uh, entity is there. So it has its own fields and these fields are called what? MBG? These are called attributes. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the table, what is there? Basically, these are called, uh, understand like this. These are called what? These are called? Entity. What these are called? Entity, very good. The tables basically are called entity and the fields in the tables basically are called attributes. Okay. Understood? Okay. So like entity is like a subset of the main table. Yeah, you can say subset of the main table. Okay. Okay. So basically we have different types of entities. Uh, tomorrow I will brief you about the types of entities and all, and then uh, we will try to create some uh, data model in the this one. The types of entities we have type one, we have type two, we have type three, we have type four. So why, what is type one? Changeable by a change request generated database table. Change uh, type four is changeable by a other uh, entity uh, generated database table. Type three is not changeable by MDG generated database table. And type two, basically type two is not used much. I have to check what is the description for this. Uh, tomorrow's class, anyway, I will briefly uh, discuss about it, okay. So type one entity is basically, you know parent-child relationship in tables? What is the yes. question? Yes, yes. Yeah, everyone knows, right? Or anyone does not know? No, sorry, what is that come again? Uh... Parent and child relationship in table. In the table? So in the table, we have like a parent and child. Yes, yes. You know this concept or you don't know? No, no, no don't. Ibrahim, do, do you know or you don't know? No, no, I don't know. 
clear or not, right? Okay, no problem. See, let me give you a very simple example. You will understand what is happening. Okay. So, say for example, you have an employee table. Can we, Everyone, uh, huh? can we give specific to a metal master? I can give, but you won't understand it properly. I will give it with respect to material master also. But first you understand this concept, okay? okay then okay. it would be clear. Okay. So all of us, after that, I will tell you about material master also. I will show you in the table how it uh, works and all, okay? So everyone is working in some company, right? Mm -hmm. So we are the employees of some company. Say, for example, this is the employee table, like Mara table and all. Then employee say, for example, salary. Salary related one table is there, right? So for employee salary related table, First of all, employee salary related to table data. First of all, what is uh, should be there in the system or database? You are the employee, right? Mm -hmm. For your salary account, first of all, what should be there in the company? The employee ID. Very good. The employee should be there first in the company. So mm -hmm. parent table is what which will be having your all the basic data like employee ID, okay. employee name, okay, this designation, okay, then address, for address also we have uh, different tables, okay, uh, say for example, other card number, pen card number, say for this, like this, okay, so this little bit of detail should be there in the employee table, if these details are there in the employee table, then only employee salary will come into picture. Now, employee salary, if I say salary, now system will get confused. Salary of which employee? There are thousands of employees, but which employee you are talking about? So that is why in the salary table, what should be there? This employee, employee ID should be ID. there. Okay. okay. So that is why this is called a primary key in employee table. This is very important. Okay, if you want to understand, one is primary key. Uh -huh. One is what? Foreign key. Foreign key. Okay. I just like in... Uh... Foreign key is what? Foreign key. This is also a primary key in this table, but it is a foreign key for which table? Employee table. For this table prospective, this is a foreign key, right? So now this and this table will be linked to this primary key. Getting the point? Mm -hmm. So through this employee ID, uh, uh, it would be linked. Then the salary when we give, so we know, okay, for this employee, this is the salary. For this employee, this is the salary. For this employee, this is the salary. But if SAP does not come up with this concept. Maybe someday my manager's salary will come and create it in my account, right? Then I will be very happy that I have got my manager's salary. To avoid all this confusion, SAP has come up with all these concepts. These concepts are already earlier there in the industry when the uh, RDBMS was uh, introduced. Okay, so these concepts are there. SAP has just adapted it. Getting the point or any yeah. uh, doubt in this? Okay. In so Mara, huh? what you are saying is every table has to like have the foreign key that hmm. attach all of them to like the parents table. Pardon, please. Can you come again? So I just want to like, what you mean is like all the table we have like a parent, uh, a primary key that will attach them to all other tables. Yes, yes. So okay. if you have a, uh, means so many tables, right? So there should be some link in the table. So that is why to have all the links, we have primary key and the foreign key relationship. Okay, okay. so that the tables are what? 
the tables are linked okay so type one entity is basically the represent the what primary table so employee table say for example okay mara table these are the primary tables right so these tables they will means uh, uh, means, uh tell, tell you about this table primary table and type four entity is the child table so a salary is the child table right if the employee table is not there then there is no means meaning of this salary table so this is like this type three entity basically in the marcy apart from this employee id maybe salary id some uh, means uh, key could be key field should be there which is not present in the employee table right it could be happen right two primary keys are there which are uh, together called the composite key so these things one once we want to introduce that time we use type 3 first of all we will create a type 3 entity and then what we will do then we will incorporate this type 3 in the type 4 entity so these things we will see in um, detail in tomorrow's class how we will do this and we will create our uh, data model also getting the point okay. just i'm giving you idea today how it is happening then we, what we have then we have the um, relationship so once we create the parent and child how we relate these two tables to the foreign key relationship right similarly in entities also we have different type of relationship so we have leading relationship, we have qualifying relationship, we have referencing relationship, and we have a uh, means foreign key relationship is also there, uh, which is newly introduced. Okay, but mainly three relationships are used, which is leading, qualifying, and referencing. Getting the point or any doubt in this? Any doubt means you ask me. Yeah, clear. Clear, right? So first of all, what we will be creating, we will be creating our data model. So once the data model is created, okay, then we will see the process modeling. Okay, process modeling, what we will see? Any idea? Any one of you having any idea? Uh, is it like uh, this staging and all those things? Very good, yes. In process modeling, what we will do, we will configure the CR. Process modeling has two sections. One is CR, one is workflow. Okay. okay. In CR, what we have, CR, uh, we will see how the CR is configured and all business activity, actions, logical actions and all. Okay, all these things we will see. In workflow, what we will see, we will see the static workflow and we will see the rule-based workflow. Okay. And I will tell you the questions also what they will be asking from these areas. And in the system also, I will show you how it is there, okay? Static workflow and rule-based workflow. Okay, then what we will be doing, then we will be doing the UI modeling. Okay, I will tell you about the UI modeling and all what is there, like where the SPM will come into picture. After that, maybe I will tell you about the APIs. Okay, like how the APIs will be. Then what I will be telling you, I will be telling you about the data uh, means validation. Uh, it is better API I will tell later after this validation and derivation. Okay. Validation and derivation will come. I will tell you what are the techniques in FPM feeder class. I will do in the baddies. I will do what is baddie. So let me write it here. Baddy also I have to explain what is baddy and all. So and what is FPM method feeder class and all that also I will explain it to you. Okay. Then the DRF framework. 
with the DRF framework, I will tell you what is DRF, what is E L E. Do you know what is E L E? No. E L E. Okay, no problem. I will tell you E L E. I doc. I will tell you. Then SOA services also. I will tell you. Okay, and uh, related to E L E. I doc. Not just uh, whatever is covered in our topic. Apart from that, also like interview prospective, how they will be asking you question. That also I will tell you. And if you go through that areas. Uh, means then uh, it will be also handy. So, because straight away they won't be asking you question from this areas. Or maybe if you are writing the um, certification exam also. Apart from this DRF also, uh, ALE and SOA also they will be asking some questions. Okay. Then I will tell you about the filtering technique. Okay. Then O data also I will tell you. Okay, what is O data? Okay, uh, how it is used and all. Little bit brief. I will be giving you. Then FPM, uh, sorry, Fury related. Little bit of uh, knowledge I will give you. Okay, and then we have consolidation. That also I will tell you how it happens. Uh, generally, if you know. Uh, to this much, okay. So I think that would be enough for you to uh, clear uh, any interview, okay. So far, then consolidation also now people are asking a little bit uh, in the market, but not much. But if you are thorough with these techniques up to this, then uh, like uh, any interview you can clear, or you can work also in any project, okay. Consolidation is also there in the uh, market now, but uh, people are not asking much on this. But in the uh, like uh, certification prospect, uh, if anyone wants to provide certification, give certification on all, that time these concepts uh, are needed. So I will tell you through this. Any doubt in this? No. Or uh, these things are clear to you? Hello, everything is clear or any doubt? Yeah, clear. Okay. okay. I will tell you each and everything. Okay. And something is there like in training, people won't be telling you. Uh, that also I will tell you in the uh, interview perspective. So that when you uh, go through this, all these uh, things, the, your concept will also be clear. And if you after the uh, 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 training, if you want to attend some interview also, that time also it will uh, help you. Yeah. So these things are there. And now uh, I'm just uh, stop sharing now. Just give me one minute. In system, I will show you how it looks like. The data model and all the entities. Okay, just one minute I'm showing you. So you have to go to the um, system. So this page will be coming. Okay. Then what will you do? You will come here. You will put MDG IMG. Do you know this transaction code? No. Oh, no. Okay. So once you give this MDG IMG, it will take you to this. Okay. Here you can see general settings. Under this general settings, you will see data model. Under this data model, you will see edit data model. Getting my point? Mm -hmm. Any doubt in this? So what you did was um, MDG, hi MG. This is the T code. Here you have to provide it. Okay, so once you provide it, it will uh, eventually come to this screen. And I was still talking about the data model, right? MM data model. See, here you can see this is the MM data model. This is the BP data model. This is the finance data model. Finance data model is represented by what? This is 0G or OG? Uh, what uh, is it? OG. No, this is 0G. Wow. Okay. Because some person will be coming um, 
so i met with one person he was just a fresher he took some training from somewhere and uh, sometimes we call it og also okay but it was basically zero g but the thing is he was not finding it okay then he came to me and says, he was saying that uh, og was not there og was not there but uh, then like i come to understand that no he has but he is a technically good person like abap and all he was very good knowledge so he managed somehow so don't get confused with this zero g it is okay so like this you will be having the uh, data model this will be the active area i will tell you what is active area okay and if it is blank what is the meaning of this if it is filled like this what is the meaning of this okay then like uh, yeah these things are important here then uh, what is the entity types so these are the entity types okay i told you right and you can from position like m a e r i a l material is the entity what is root entity what is what i will be telling you everything so this is the material entity material entity what are the attributes we have so these are the attributes we have in the material entity can you see this yeah so these are the attributes we have let me see okay material text and all everything is there so this is these are the things basically what we have so these attributes are govern attributes right yes again among all these attributes if you don't want say for example here we have uh, 50 attributes okay under this 50 attribute if you don't want that okay uh, i don't want all the 50 attributes to be governed now maybe later point of time in project uh, we can uh, use it for the governance process that time some settings are there maybe 30 attributes you will take it for a governance purpose for now and later maybe uh, like you will decide okay uh, now this basically i don't want this uh, means uh, or i want this uh, attribute to be covered in later point of time you can do it this option is also provided by md so you will delete from here if you don't want to go no, on... it would be it would, would it will be there because see now in the project it it won't be a project for one or two months right it would be continuous for uh, years after years so maybe today you don't have the need for governing x y z uh, fields or attributes but later point of time you know that okay maybe later point of time these attributes can be governed so you will keep it in this attribute okay and then some settings are there where you can just uh, mention that okay this won't be governed some check box will be there you will check and it will uh, means uh, it will tell that okay it won't be this things won't be governed or this field should be governed okay and later point of time if you see, feel that okay not this field should be governed and that field should be governed then that option also provided by mdc getting the point so that i think that will cover the this. next topics right next yes 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 is coming uh, uh, like uh, things i will be telling all the things okay then i was telling you about relationship right so you can see the relationship also here you can see the relationship what are the relationship you have say for example mara so material and it uh relationship leading so you can see right so this would be coming like relationship and all i will tell you all the things okay how it is with this it has only foreign key relationship that is why it has not come so you have to just see what is the relationship and all how it is there so like this i will tell you 
then it has some business object type that also i will tell you what is business object type why it is needed why this root checkbox is checked okay then i was telling you about the access class right in reuse active area you will be one access class see these are the access classes you are uh, you have treated right so material is what active area where we have seen the active area any idea i told you where you have seen the active area so in the data model we have seen this active area right material so how is associated with this class so we can see here so uh, okay one minute so we can see here this material is associated with this access class so in the reuse mode what will happen through this access class only from the staging area the data will be populated to what the active area active area this is the point then we have the staging table let me show you how the staging table look like So this is basically one program USMD data model. So this, if you go here, it will ask you about data model. Say for the MM data model I have provided, I will execute. What I will see, I will see this. Okay. So all these tables and check tables will be there, so that uh, you will understand thoroughly when we create because this is a very big one, right? So it won't be. like uh, easy for you to understand so when once we create a uh, our uh, z data model custom data model that time it would be very clear to you okay so you can see here how it is so let me see whether any z data model is already created in the system or not okay z Sachin has created something. Let's see what he has created. So Mara, what is there? It is basically the root table. Okay. And this is there. So like this, the table will be there. Okay. So you can see here, it will hold the data. So if so, CR is activated. That is why it is not having any data. Staging table. Can you see the, the, here is no data? Means what? CR is activated. So there is no data. So all these things we will understand uh, step by step once we create our own uh, means data model or maybe with the own CR type also. I will tell you like how it happens. Okay. Any doubt so far? Anywhere? no all set so this can be used or this can be uh, means access through this program or there is a t code t code is mdg underscore data underscore t code d okay sorry uh, slash and i have to put mdg underscore data underscore m o d here you will provide mm then once you ex execute you will get it right so let me just write down this t code which will be handy for you so what are the t codes one is what m d g i m g another t code is what m d g Underscore data underscore o d l. Got it? Any doubt in this? Any doubt in this? Or uh, everything is clear? Yes, sir. 
What are they used for? MDG data model, why it is used? This is yeah. used to see the uh, staging area, staging table. Okay. And the first one? The first one is basically used for configurational purpose. Okay. MDG, all the MDG configuration, what is there, it is done through this MDG. MDG. Okay. For MDG config, basically it is used. And these paths are also important. Uh, like while doing it, you will uh, remember all this because some companies, they will be asking you the path. It is very rare. Uh, most of the companies won't be asking. I have faced one interview where the person was asking me, tell me about the path. If you want to uh, create a custom data model, what is the what are the paths you will follow? What are the steps you will follow? Okay. So then you have to say, I will go to I am MDJ IMG. Then I will go to the data mod, uh, modeling here. See how it is there. MDG IMG, general setting, then data modeling, then edit data model. I will go there. Uh, if I want to means change the means add some attribute to the standard uh, entities and all. So I will go to the particular MM um, uh, means uh, data model. I will click on the entity type. Okay, I will go to the particular entity type. I will go to the attributes. In this attributes, I will add my attributes over here. Is this clear or any doubt in this? Can you explain again? It is clear, right? Can you talk? That was too fast. That was too fast? Yeah. Okay. Okay, no problem because in coming days also we will be coming and we will be telling you all the things, right? So that time you will easily remember and understand all the things. Okay. 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 Maybe while doing tomorrow, I will uh, tell you the path. I will give you like where to navigate and how to see the path details also I will give. So you can just write it down and uh, keep it handy when you are using uh, the MPC system. Okay. okay. And whatever doubts you have, please go through again and again. I'm telling whatever you have learned today, go through it once. Serve the internet. Okay, I have tell you about the code deployment, hub deployment. You have understood right now. So when you go to the internet, surf internet now, you will understand in a better way. Go to it. Okay, try to understand it. So this will help you. Otherwise, if you think that, okay, today I will uh, complete the course and from tomorrow I will start preparing for the means the hands-on or for interview. So that would be too late. Many things you will forget. Okay, so the, again, you have to see the videos. Again, you have to do the hard work. Okay, so now everything is very uh, new and uh, means I have explained once to you. Go, to, go through the internet, try to read some articles, see come with some uh, means a question. So this is, these are my questions. Like this, you will understand in a better way. Krishna, okay. I, will you be sharing this Excel sheet? Excel sheet you need? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me do one thing. Let me tell them that maybe they can uh, keep it in a uh, separate folder, which is accessible to you guys also, okay? Yeah, sure. Thanks. So maybe I can upload it and from there you can access it. Okay, I, I will just talk to them. But so far, these concepts are clear, right? Yeah. Because whatever I have, uh, yeah, because whatever I told you, I have told you uh, means with the interview prospective also. From this area, what are the concepts? you need and in the interview also how they will be asking you and how you can answer these questions okay so from and in the certification also in this topic uh, means from there also some questions will come okay so these topics are very important what is reuse mode what is uh, active uh, means a flex mode what is active area staging area what is hub deployment what is core deployment okay these are very important and from entity attributes, data model, uh, anyway, tomorrow we will be uh, looking into it. Okay. And uh, which data model use, uh, how, how means this uh, use, and which data model use uh, this flex, 
why they use uh, reuse, why they use flags, what is the purpose of the access class over here, okay? So all these things I have uh, explained to you. So you can go through it once, and if you need help, tomorrow you can ask. Okay. Uh, Any doubt? Or everything is uh, clear. Okay, so uh, on the hub and code deployments, like um, I know what is hub and the code deployment, but I just want to know why do we uh, choose one over one? Like if I'm to like talk about why should we choose yes, all? Yes. So, so basically, if you have a very diversified system, say for example, you have MDG, you have operational ECC one, op CRM, SRM, some other system. So from all the system, you want it to be governed in MDG, right? Your customer, your vendor, like here you will be having BP, right? So from BP, the customer data will go here, the vendor data will go here, right? So this is a very diversified system. So that time we will go for the hub. Okay. And the code deployment means so it is, with code deployment also you can do this, but the thing is, uh, Generally, it has been done by the hub deployment. Code deployment is a very uh, means new. Okay, so now if you want with this code deployment and you have the other things, that time also you can have this. So that time you will uh, treat it as hub um, means this one. Okay, where you are replicating, and in code deployment, what is happening? It is not you are not replicating things. Okay, in that. Operational ECC is there with the this one only. So it would be MDG on top of the ECC or S4. Here replication is not needed. So directly when it is uh, activated from the uh, means uh, staging, the data will be coming to the active area through the access class. Here what will happen? Once it is activated, the data will be coming to the active area. From the active area, it will be transported to different, what? Different systems. Okay. Getting the point or any doubt in this? Okay. It's clear, right? Yes. Okay, fine, sure. Uh, so let us conclude it today and uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below, and we will reply to them at the earliest.